Thank you for joining us. Our team is HEC 28 and our entry into the TSGC design challenge for fall 2020 is an integrated PEM fuel cell system. Our team consists of myself, Jeff Eglinton, Robert Ma, Oscar Palencia, Marco Ponce, and Sherwan Rizal. Our presentation will follow this outline, beginning with some background into our topic, followed by our primary components, then our design and its individual components, and finishing with a conclusion. The purpose of our project is to design a simulation and to model the balance of plant for a regenerative fuel cell system that can serve as a backup energy source in a lunar environment. This slide shows a generalized diagram of how a regenerative fuel cell system works, where the fuel cell combines hydrogen and oxygen into product water and then the elect electrolyzer divides that water back into gases in an ever repeating loop. Our design objective is the BOP, an engineering term which refers to all the various supporting components and auxiliary subsystems of a power plant that are required to deliver the energy, except the generating unit itself, which in this case is the fuel cell. Our primary objective is to design this BOP in a way that it can deliver a 100 watt net power while minimizing overall mass and volume so that it can be effectively delivered to the moon. We will create a complete set of models for the regenerative fuel cell system under lunar operating conditions and simulate the operation for the balance of plant. Now Robert will discuss the fuel cell and electrolyzer. Thank you, Jeff. So what are fuel cells? Fuel cells are like batteries, but what makes them different is that they can continuously run as long as hydrogen and oxygen is supplied. The fuel cell we are using is an Infinity brand fuel cell with initial operating conditions of 338 Kelvin at steady state. It operates at nighttime for a 12 hour cycle. We want a net power of 100 watts for the entire system, but the power output of our fuel cell is 170 watts. This is because we need to account for the power uses of the other components of our balanced plant. Next slide, please. A fuel cell produces electricity through a chemical reaction between hydrogen and water. This reaction is a half reaction. As you can see in the video, oxygen enters the fuel cell through the cathode side, while hydrogen enters through the anode side. The reactant byproducts are water and heat. Next slide, please. What is an electrolyzer? An electrolyzer is a device that performs electrolysis. This process uses electricity to break water into hydrogen and oxygen. The electrolyzer fully operates during the day for a 12 hour cycle. The 132 watt usage is powered by the photovoltaic or PV solar panels. And the electrolyzer we are using is by Sustainable Innovations and it has initial operating conditions of 323 degrees Kelvin at steady state. Inside the electrolyzer, hydrogen and oxygen is controlled at 1,379 kilopascals. It should be noted that when the electrolyzer and fuel cell are not operating at full capacity, they are not completely turned off. They remain running outside of the 12-hour cycle to prevent liquids from freezing. An example of this operating condition is running water to prevent your pipes from cracking during the cold weather. Marco will now talk about our design schematic for the balance of plant. Thank you, Robert. The following schematic illustrates our BOP design. During nighttime, fuel cell is in operation where both the reactants hydrogen and oxygen generate power through an electrochemical reaction. The gases leave the storage tanks and are heated through heat exchangers to reach an ideal temperature for the reaction within the fuel cell. The product of the half reaction is H2O. The water produced is stored in a water storage tank. During daylight, the water is fed by a pump into the electrolyzer to produce oxygen and hydrogen gas. This is also known as a recharging phase for the fuel cell. After electrolysis, both gases are passed through a dehumidifier to remove any moisture from the gases. The gases are then compressed by compressors and stored in tanks to repeat the cycle. In conjunction with the BOP design, electronically controlled solenoid valves are used to control mass flow and the cooling system of VI water, similar to the water management system, is integrated to the BOP to keep the fuel cell and electrolyzer operational temperature within range. The lines connecting the components consist of insulated 316 stainless steel with an ID of 38 
and the OD of half an inch. We will now talk about the key components in our BOP. Next slide, please. Here we have our water storage tank. It is able to hold water in vapor and liquid form. Filtered water vapor enters the tank from the fuel cell as vapor and leaves the electric and leaves to the electrolyzer in liquid form. Next slide, please. The pump in our BOP design transfers the water from the storage tank to the cathode side of the electrolyzer. Apart from transporting water, the pump increases water pressure before entry into the electrolyzer. Oscar will now talk about the gas compressors. So once the gas leave the electrolyzer and pass through the humidifier, they come to the compressor to be pressurized, as shown as the values in the pressure in and pressure out. Um, the temperature will rise as the gas um, compresses. Next slide, please. Now we will talk about the storage facilities. First is the hydrogen tank. The storage pressure will be at 1.24 megapascals, and the tank capacity will be at 105 liters. Next slide, please. Second will be the oxygen tank. Um, the storage pressure for this um, tank will be at 1.92 megapascals, and the capacity will be at 34 liters. Um, the oxygen gas feeds into the cathode side of the fuel side. Next slide, please. Now, these are two smaller key components that we have, which are very important for our design. Uh, one is a heat exchanger, and the other one is a dehumidifier. The heat exchanger um, transfers the thermal energy between the coolant and the reactants. And, and this is placed after the oxygen and hydrogen tanks. The dehumidifier is before they reach their tanks, storage tanks. And, and what they do is prevent the concentration and icing uh, on the fuel cell and the coolant. Now I will pass it down to my member, Chuan. Thank you, Oscar. After the research and analysis, we came up with the final design, which addresses all the thermal fluid components essential to run the system with the optimal efficiency. This design minimized the risk of fuel cell from overheating and icing in the different components of the system in the long hour of operation. Next slide, please. We'd like to thank Dr. Rizbi for advising us through this project, Dr. Garcia, Dr. Biswas for mentoring us, uh, Mr. Benjamin, and uh, Ms. Jargons and Dr. Arkon for the opportunity. Thank you everyone for your time and we look forward for your questions. <laughs>